Hey guys, today we're going to learn about the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem only applies to all right angled triangles. Now, if you remember correctly, a triangle is made up of exactly three angles. If one of the angles is 90 degrees, then this type of triangle is called a right angled triangle. All right, so before we show you the Pythagorean theorem, just make sure that you remember that you can only use this for right angled triangles. And now, here's the theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. What does this mean? Well, a and b over here refers to two side lengths of the right triangle. It's not just any of the two sides. It refers specifically to the two legs, which is just another way to say the two sides that make up the 90 degree angle. So A and B are called legs. The side that is not a leg, which is right over here, is called the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse. Sounds pretty cool, right? For a moment though, let's actually think about what this theorem is saying. What does A squared mean? Well, we know that A is the length of one of the legs. We also know that a squared is the same as a times a. But what would a times a mean? Well, if you think about it, if you had a square that had exactly the lengths of a, and of course we already know that a square has four equal side lengths, then a times a would be the same thing as getting the area of this square right here. Great, and since we went through all of that, realizing what b squared would mean becomes rather simple. b squared is just b times b, making it the area of this square right here. And naturally, c squared is just c times c, making it the area of this square right here. All right, so now that we know what this a squared, b squared, and c squared is referring to, Let's reread the Pythagorean theorem and think about what it's actually saying. If we square the length of one of the legs, which is to say that we are getting the area of this square, and then we add that area to the area that we get when we square the other leg, then we will get exactly the area of this square as determined by the hypotenuse. Mm hmm. And if we actually try to take the areas of both squares and fill it into c squared, we'll see that it fits perfectly since the theorem is actually true. The beauty behind this theorem is that if you have the information to two of the sides of a right angle triangle, then you can find the length of the other side guaranteed. So let's actually apply this new theorem that we just learned to solve some questions together. All right. So here's a triangle. We see that one of the side lengths is three and the other is four. We want to find the length of this side right here. First of all, can we use the Pythagorean theorem? The answer is yes, because you can see this angle over here is a right angle, or shall I say 90 degrees. So it turns out to be the case that the lengths of the two different sides that are provided before us are the lengths of the two legs of this triangle. We start off by writing the Pythagorean theorem at the top, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We fill in the information that we know at our disposal, we get three squared plus four squared equals c squared. So in our previous illustration of the Pythagorean theorem, we realized that squaring each side of the triangle was the same thing as finding the area of a square that was determined by each side length. Now if we apply that same idea to this example, we see that 3 squared is 9, which is the area of this square here. Squaring this side over here gives us an area of 16. 
To find the area of the hypotenuse squared, all we have to do is add these two areas together. We get an area of 25. 25 is exactly the area of the hypotenuse squared. Therefore, since the question is not asking us about what the area of the hypotenuse squared is, our final answer would not be 25. Instead, the question is looking for the length of the hypotenuse, which is c, not c squared. And to find the answer to this, we simply need to do square root for both sides of the equation. And for the left side, we would get c, and for the right side, we would get 5. So we have c equals 5. It's not too hard, right? Do note that if this triangle had given you a leg and a hypotenuse instead, you would still have been able to get the length of the other leg. For example, if it gave you the length of A as 3 and the hypotenuse as 5, then all you would have to do is use the Pythagorean theorem and simplify. 3 squared plus B squared equals 5 squared. 3 squared is 9 and 5 squared is 25. Subtract 9 on both sides to isolate b, and we get b squared is 16. Of course, we are interested in the length b, not b squared. So we use square root on both sides to get b equals 4. That's simple enough, right? So all you have to memorize is the Pythagorean theorem itself, and remember that a and b are referring to the legs, and that C is referring to the hypotenuse. But be careful and make sure that you are allowed to use the Pythagorean theorem before you rush off to use it. In this example, we have a triangle that has the lengths 4 and 7. While you might want to immediately use 4 and 7 as your A and B and find out your C, you need to first realize that you cannot use the Pythagorean theorem here. Remember, the Pythagorean theorem can only be used for right-angled triangles. In this triangle, this angle over here looks like it might be 90 degrees, but we wouldn't be able to assume that it is unless it was marked down as a right angle, like this. This angle could, for example, be 89 degrees, and while it would be very, very close to a right angle triangle, we would still not be able to use the Pythagorean theorem to find out the length of this side since we don't know that we have a right angle in this triangle. So always look to see if the triangle is a right angle triangle, and then look to see that you have the information on two of the side lengths of the triangle before you jump to the conclusion that you can use the Pythagorean theorem. So that's it for this video. Try some questions and we will see you in the next one.